Hey, what's up everybody? So I wanted to show you guys the lid tech. Um, different ways you can make your lids for inoculation or even grain to grain transfers. So um, I have six of them, different, different methods that I used, that I have used. Um, and we'll start with this one, which you know we all begin with, um, with these ones, with the cakes. And it involves in making um, four holes on each end for the inoculation points using a 332 drill bit. I find that this is the right diameter. Um, anything smaller, you could have problems with the thickness of, of the gauges of the syringes. Some of them are pretty thick. And, um, and also it could, it could suffocate the mycelium if they're too small too. There's not enough gas exchange. Um, and if they're too big, there's too much air and it kind of dries off the substrate. So you don't want to go too big, too small. I find that this, or even a size bigger, is um, optimal you know for for all that the gas exchange and also the um, to allow air and um, you just want to make sure you don't put you don't put five of them because um, I've noticed when you put five of them that also tr it could it causes too much um, too much air, air to go in there and dry out the substrate so I use four uh, you can use the five one some people do it I used to I did it like a couple times until I realized it's, it's not necessary um, you just want them on the outside that way you can see your syringe hit you know see with the inoculation and you can look at your syringe and see what's coming um how many cc's are coming out um and that's that's the you know we all use this we all begin with this way the next way i have um used and and and, and this this pretty much this tech is 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 kind of a you gotta you gotta make it and it involves in uh using a self-healing port that's what this is and you get these things right here at um, shroomsupply.com or any mycologist place or even Amazon. Amazon carries one kind. They have, I, I've seen three different ones so far, but they have several different ones, different colors. This is the gray one, and it's the, probably pretty much the, um, I'd say the cheapest one because of the how thin it is. Um, the red one is pretty much the, it's a thicker one and it just it the thickness allows how many times you're able to inoculate shove that syringe through the, through the rubber piece without it you know causing any issues or affecting it the performance of it and the blue ones are about 32 um, times before you start uh, uh, um, affecting it and the other ones I don't, I don't remember how much but these ones you know you've got to figure these are going to be about half of that and um, it involves in drilling a hole, it looks like this, with a 3 8 drill bit. And sometimes, you know, I, I'll actually put the drill bit like that and just kind of measure it and make sure it's not over, you know, or not too under. Um, and then what you want to do is you kind of want to get something like a screwdriver or flathead and, and you want to push it through there. Um, it's kind of a pain. Um, so that's why I use, I use a flathead screwdriver and just kind of, you know, kind of pinch it and um, and you, it'll go right through and then you want to just kind of pull it as best you can to the other end um, and so it, I bought this lid right here off of it was one of the only jars I bought online uh, with subs with rye grains in it and um, it was pre-made like this and you can see the person who made it drilled one hole and then he used a filter disc like this one right here um, to for, for the for the gas exchange and also for the um, f f to allow no camp contaminants like a filter um, hence filter disc and so I would usually when I use when I made these ones I made a couple of them when I started doing that when I didn't want to go buy you know off of um, I didn't want to buy these certain things um, I just ended up buying these and um, I would drill. I would drill. You know, six holes with um, with the three eighths inch. Um, I'm sorry, the three thirty two uh, drill bit. You can even go smaller if you want. As long as there's a, a, a couple holes, you know, about four, four, four to six holes um, that you can stick that filter disc over it. You could also stick some Tyvek. This is Tyvek. It's um, you know they, they sell them at Home Depot, at the paint section. Um, you can even use the um, in the the post office they have the, the packaging has that type of material 
and you want to double it up because it's kind of thin and you could place you could glue that over the hole if you want and I think I've got one over here that I did like that if I could find it if not Um, you know, I don't know. Oh, I'm not taking it. Anyway, oh yeah, here it is. Here you go. So as you can see, I used that a couple of times. That's why it's all nasty and shit. So I drilled uh, six holes and I glued with some silicone. Um, it was this stuff right here. Um, and it worked. And it worked really well. You know what I mean? It's um. It, you know you could you could put in the pressure cooker and you, the the you know the sanitize and however however you're gonna uh, the method you're gonna use uh, the heat's not gonna hurt it and it stays there pretty good and that's gonna you be a good uh, gas exchange and a filter to keep contaminants out and so this this person used a a filter disc which is cool. And um, so that's a, that's a, a, a way you could do it um, if you can't find um, these syringe filters. Um, and this is the way I I now do the the, the lids. It's um, I place my 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 favorite way because it's you know it's no problems are going to happen, and you're not going to have any problems with these ones either. They're really foolproof and. As long as you have the syringe filter, and you don't need a syringe filter, um, you could use uh, polyfill pillow pillowcase stuffing like this, and I'll explain how that works. Um, so I would, I, like I said, I use a uh, three-eighths drill bit for the for the um, self-healing port. Uh, the the red ones are going to be a half inch, which are a little bit a lot lot thicker, um, but the blue one and the gray ones are usually um, the, the three-eighths. And if you go to shroomsupply.com and you end up buying, you know, these or the syringe filter, they'll show, they'll let you know um, in the description, or you know what size it is, um, and you could use the drill bit in accordance of that size. And then the small holes I use um, the 332 or smaller, as long as it's, you know, as long as there's enough for a gas exchange. Then, um, like, like, I, like about this one you, if you're gonna buy the syringe filter which is this thing they have different colors which indicate different type of um, how thickness the, the filter is in there and this is really not, really works really well because um, it allows for gas exchange and also prevents contaminants from going in there and you could pressure cook these um, I recommend sanitizing them in a pressure cooker for 45 minutes at 15 psi along with um, the self healing part and I use a 3 8 inch for the self heal import, and um, 11.64 is usually the, the the width for the for the syringe filter. But like I said, if you if you buy them from Shroom Supply, they'll tell you depending on what color you use. There's blue. There's different colors indicating different um, different thicknesses of the filter inside. Um, so that's that way. And um, so we could go on and if that's that if you want to go buy, you know, buy them those things they're 10 bucks for they're about $11 for 10 of them. And these are about, you know, same price. They're, you know, they're not they're not cheap and shroomsupply.com has them pretty cheap. They're like 35 cents up to 75 cents, I believe. Um, and then these ones they have two, a couple different kinds um, around a dollar a piece. And you could get kind of, you know, you could choose one or you could choose you know they the price breaks down the more you buy um, so this is a uh, this is another method I use and um, it involves in drilling just one hole in the center which I would use a 3 8 inch uh, drill bit or even a size above or a size smaller and just get any pillow case a pillow and just take the stuffing out a little piece of stuffing and what this is, what this does is it's going to be a great filter to keep contaminants out. And it's also going to uh, allow for a gas exchange. And you can inoculate right through that, that middle part, right, right through the filter itself, that polyfill. I have the, this tie, this um, gasket maker right here around there because um, I used this for when I didn't have these, these wide mouth lids. Um, I needed to use it for, um, for one of the cakes. So I had to put, you know, this around there to keep 
keep too much gas, keep too much air out of there and dry out the substrate and you know particles from falling in there. Um, but normally it would be just uh, it would be just all solid except for one hole in the middle. And this is very very effective. It works very well. I've used it many times this way. Um, I just don't know more because it's. it's I like using I like the, the proper way I think this is the proper way and so you, you could just use this way very very simple very cheap so that's another way and the next way you would be is to use a filter disc and I what I do is I get um, the lid I drill about two to three holes in it with a with um, a 1364 drill bit you could go smaller, one size smaller is one size bigger, um, but don't go too big because you can too much air. And uh, you, what you want to do is you just put the put, put the lid on there. Or, sorry, put the the filter disc. They come in different sizes: wide mouth, regular mouth, um, and I think there's a couple of other ones. I I you know this is just this would be for the regular mouth, um, and I would I would just put the filter on top of the metal lid and that's important because if you put the filter below the metal lid say if you do it this way and you put that above there and you go and you stick your jar your, your, your lid on your jars like that this is going to get water is going to get jumped in there there's gonna, something's going to make this wet and that's going to just going to cause um contaminants to go right through that through that layer if you're guaranteed to get contaminants if this thing gets wet so that's why it's recommended, not by me, but by the mycologists who use it and came up with it to put it, the filter on the outside of the lid and the, the metal piece underneath it. And this works very well for, for um, grain to grain transfers. I use this all the time for grain to grain and I never have any problems. You could use this for inoculation too. Uh, it's kind of a pain because you can't see where the holes are if you're if you're inoculating with your syringe right through the disc. Um, but you could do that. So that's it. That's enough, that's the another way to do it. Also, another way is to use the Tyvek. And um, I'm gonna try to get this thing off of here. And it just cut a piece off. You know, I got. I can see I got a um, a piece and I folded it. It's really thin and it has, you know, the holes are, you know, you can see, you pretty much see your hand. So I double it up. I, I fold it in half, stick it over the lid on the jar. I'm sorry, over the, yeah, the, the metal lid, just like that, and put your ring right over it. And then screw your ring down. And that's just, just as good as a uh, filter disc. Um, works very well. I've used it. And you could just either for grain to grain or just inoculate right through that or even, even put a hole in the center you can you know exactly where that hole's at and if you want to use the, the um, this gasket maker it's an um, RTV this is works for all if you could like pretty much like this is you could um, inoculate with your syringe right through that and it's really durable it holds up to the heat in the pressure cooker so it's not going to come off it's stays there really well and that's going to cause you know no contaminants and, and it's, it's, it's just works very well it's it's a, a recommended method uh, by many many and um, just you could buy this at you know Home Depot where, wherever it's a gasket for cars you know what I mean that's why it's high temperature because you're going to put it on your block say like a thermostat you don't have a regular gasket this is a temporary and that's why it holds up to the heat so these are the six different ways you can make your lids and um, and if you have any questions about that I mean these are very 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 well these are not gonna you're not gonna have any problems doing it this way um, so I just wanted to show you guys that if you have any questions or any concerns you just give me a let me send me a comment and um and I'll reach out and I'll, I'll answer it right away you know what I mean um, so that's the cheapest way is this one because Tyvek is so cheap you could go to the post office and get an envelope that has this type of material or go to the um, Home Depot paint section and this is like a painter's uh, outfit it's like old coveralls that I was it's the same coveralls I was wearing during the grain to grain transfer video that I made if you guys want to see that and this is just the best way because you know it's, it's just 
it's the, the main mycologist way. Just, I, I think it's, it, it's going to prevent any problems from happening. I like it. So I make all my, all my lids like this. And it just, the syringe just goes right there and bam. I'm going to have no contamination and proper gas exchange too. So that's the lid tech. All right. Later.